Yo what's happening guys, welcome to your 11th Node.js tutorial and in this video I just want to talk a little bit about clients and servers. Alright then gang, so we're getting to the point in this tutorial series where we want to start creating a server in Node.js and serve it up some files. But before we do that, I just want to take a few minutes to talk about what actually goes on behind the scenes um, when we serve those files and how we request them because I think having an understanding of this is going to serve you better when you're writing your applications. So, when we browse a website, we're browsing it in a browser like Google Chrome hopefully and sometimes we might do something on a website like ask for some data, right? At which point the client, which is the browser, sends a request to the server and then the server will handle that request and send a response to the client, which will update probably what we see, okay? But how do the two sides actually communicate with each other? Well, that's where protocols come into play. So a protocol is basically just a set of communication rules which two sides agree on when they communicate with each other, okay? So, for example, we could have a German guy and an Italian dude, and they want to speak to each other for some reason, but when they start talking to each other in their mother tongues, you know, the Italian speaking Italian and the German speaking German, then they can't really understand each other and nothing happens. Nothing gets communicated between them. But they might both know English as a second language, so they agree with each other to speak in English and then they can communicate with each other. Okay, so that's similar to how it works on the internet. The client and the server can agree to communicate via a particular set of rules known as a protocol and that way they can communicate easily. So they just follow a set of rules that they can both understand. Okay, so you probably already know that each computer or server can be identified by its own unique IP address, right? And it looks like all these numbers here. So if we want to communicate between the two computers, if a client wants to make a request to the server, then it will first need to connect to this IP address. And it's gonna open up what's known as a socket between the two computers, which is essentially just a channel down which information can be sent, okay? And the information that's sent is structured via different protocols. For example, HTTP or FTP. And these protocols are like the different languages that our German and Italian guys can speak. For example, they could both speak English or they might both speak Spanish. So they could choose which language to communicate and each language is structured in a different way. So depending on what the client or the server is trying to communicate with each other, we use a different protocol to structure the data or information that's being sent. So FTP is for file transfer and it stands for file transfer protocol. So the P always stands for protocol and HTTP is used for websites. So when the structure of the information that's being sent has been decided on, for example, HTTP, the information is then sent down this socket between the two computers via a protocol called TCP, okay? So although the data is structured in a particular way, and that's gonna be either HTTP or FTP or something like that, the way that it's sent from the server to the client is via a protocol called TCP. And what this essentially does is split up the data into smaller little sections like this and transfers them along the socket. And these small little sections are called packets. So all of this functionality is built into our computers and then Node.js gives us the ability to access this functionality, to open a connection between two computers and send information between them. So if we run Node.js on a server, we can tell Node what information we wanna send out to clients when they make a particular response. And that's what we're gonna be doing in the next tutorial. We're gonna create a server and we're gonna to respond to requests made by the client or the browser, if you like. But before we do that, I wanna just go over one more thing first, and that is ports. So when we send a request to a server, which Node.js is living on, how do we know that the request was meant for Node.js itself and not some other program which is also running on the server instead, like an email program, for example? 
how do we know that we want Node.js and not the email program or any other program to deal with that request? And the answer is that Node.js and other programs running on the server all listen to a particular port number. So if a request is sent to an IP address to a particular port number on that IP, if Node.js is listing out for requests on that port, it will respond. Otherwise it won't. So that's how we route our requests to Node.js, okay? And a typical port will look something like this on the end of an IP address. So there's the IP address, okay? And on that computer could live a variety of different programs. And then Node.js might be listening to a particular port, 3000. So if we send requests to this port, 3000, then it's gonna be listening to that port and it's gonna send a response to us. So that's how it all works. And we're gonna be looking into this in the next tutorial when we go ahead and create a server and send some response to our requests. So any questions, feel free to leave those down below. Otherwise guys, I'll see you in the very next tutorial.